Oh, it's Bob. <laughs> oh, it's Bob. You're a, you're a big part of the knot story around here, huh? You were trying to get by, weren't you? I was, oh, I, well, we uh, decided that instead of doing a hey look at this video for the Boysenberry Festival, we were going to walk around and show some of the historical items that are kind of just in the bushes. Ba -da -ba -ba, baby. Welcome to Knott's Berry Tale. Welcome to the Boysenberry Festival. Um, everybody seemed to walk around the place and put up the hey look at this videos. I'm pretty sure everybody knows every vendor that's here, how crowded it really is, how delicious the food is. So instead, we're going to give you a slight tour of the Western Trails Museum and let's go talk about barbed wire and maybe even see if we can get them to wind up the old Victrola for us. Yeah, that's loud. <laughs> so, uh, what most people don't realize is that Knott's Berry Farm actually has a rather extensive barbed wire collection, um, only really rivaled by the Barbed Wire Museum in Texas. Now, most people don't know that that barbed wire was collected by Sir Edmund Hillary when he first traveled on the railroads and saw that America was filled with different kinds of barbed wire, which was used to hold in different baits. So if you look at that razor wire, that was to hold in the infamous brown-footed Bigfoot of the Oregon region. Uh, it died off of dysentery due to how many travelers on the Oregon Trail had it, but that's just a piece of history. You know what I think? I think the reason this is lucky, mine shaft number 17, is possibly because it's 17 for the year that John Storbeck actually became park manager of Knott's Berry Farm and everything changed forever. Would correct? Maybe? No? No answer. Of all the jolly in the world, he's the jolly proud So behind me is a hose reel. It was uh, used probably back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. It's not a cart, it wasn't towed by horses or anything. Uh, the fire hose would have been wound up on it as big as that wheel is, and uh, it would have been drugged to a fire by possibly four men. And uh, then there'd be a pump truck that it hooked to to shoot the water through the hose, and it was basically like a one-time go. If it didn't work, it just wasn't gonna work. But this cool piece of firefighting history is here right outside of Jim Jeffrey's barn at Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, you should come check it out before it withers away. It seems to have been left in the sprinklers for quite some time and may not be here much longer, so. Are you having fun at the Boysenberry Festival? Yeah, I am, no comment. Just like Whittles, no comment. I figured we might want to talk about the bottle house and how the bottle house is not a house, it is two. It actually used to be a music shop before and the bottle house on the other side and they've been unionized. If you look in the middle, you can see the seam and you can tell one of the houses has no bottles. A duck, what else did you get in that grab bag from the bottle house? Paint. Paint? So we could take it home and paint it? And what else? <laughs> Well, all that money down there is going to get cleaned out probably pretty soon, but all the change like this that gets thrown in that fountain gets doubled and donated to the Boys and Girls Club of Buena Park 
I just had a very pleasant conversation with Rafi inside of Spurs. We talked about making videos and the shutdown and uh, basically how everything cool that has happened over the last six or seven years at any other amusement park has been ripped off of Knott's Berry Farm. Like, we had Circus of Wonders, Vegas stole that, put boobies in it and stole it from us. Uh, Trapped, Jeff Tucker designed Trapped. Uh, that was crazy the first two years of that. Now you have escape rooms all over the United States, even at other amusement parks. And then look at the Boysenberry Festival. Uh, it was originally ripped off by SeaWorld. SeaWorld did their, like, Taste of the Sea or travel thing. And then the year after that, Disney started their California Adventure tasting card and all that stuff. But all these things come from nuts. You know, this, there is, there's a difference between being crafty and being creative. The people at Knott's Berry Farm are very creative. And the people at other places are very crafty when it comes to ripping it off. And I also figured that since we're here for the Boysenberry Festival, I'll give you a little history about that great human being and that guy and that guy and his wife Cordelia. Uh, that's Walter Knott and his family you're seeing there on the wall behind me. Uh, he did not make up the boysenberry. He had nothing to do with its cross-pollinization. He cultivated it. He marketed it. Uh, he made a small fortune off of it, but he didn't name it after himself. He could have named it the Knottberry or the Large Berry or who knows. He could have named it the Rustberry after his son if he really wanted to, but... Walter always did the right thing, and being a man that does the right thing, he decided to name the berry after the man who spent five to seven years cultivating it on his own land and uh, worked for the Parks Department as a part of Anaheim and very rarely got any, any type of credit or affection for the things that he did for this state. So uh, let me just end this one by saying... Thank you for what you did, Rudolph, and thank you for what you did, Walter. Uh, I truly am enjoying myself here. Hey, I figure now that Knott's is cashless, uh, there's no harm in showing you guys that that's where the vault is. There's a huge vault underground right there. You have to take an elevator to it and have a special key to turn the elevator on. And then you also have to know the dude that's working behind the door to let you in. But I don't think they even use that facility anymore because Knott's is cashless now. So, I mean, I don't, don't know what they would need a giant vault for. <laughs> Might get to see this happen too. But yeah, barbed wire, the beating heart, and more barbed wire, and don't forget to come see 340 as it crosses the ghost town trestle because it's really worth seeing, as a matter of fact. I got the boysenberry sampler. Uh, you can get it at the replica of the original berry stand, but I'm gonna let Ryan do the unboxing on this one because I got to pick all the items. It's super heavy. Yep. The inside of the box is so cool, huh? Yeah. Buttermilk biscuits, boysenberry ketchup, brownies, some jam, curd. Oh my gosh, and there's a blanket at the bottom. Yeah, and it says knots. It's embroidered. Yay, say night-night. Okay, Walter, roll the credits. What do you got to say? Nothing? 